and one of your guests could end up falling on their ass at your dinner party. What's happening, you guys? Welcome back to my channel. I wanted to give you all a quick fire guide on what is worth spending in your home. Now, all of us at some point want to do a refresh and we're not too sure where the money should go, how much we should spend, and is it really worth it? And I'm going to give you a quick list of the things that I think you should invest in in your home, either over time or when you want to do a quick refresh. Let's get into it. So the first thing that I believe is worth spending when you're in your home, wherever you are doing a refurb or anything like that, I definitely think that kitchen cabinets are worth the money. Whether it's the upper cabinets or the lower cabinets or both, I definitely think kitchen cabinets are worth a try. Investing in good quality cabinets means that you have the versatility to either paint them, sand them, do whatever you need at a later stage. So if you start off with a color and then you decide you want to go monochrome, you can actually just take the front cabinet, the front door off the cabinet and send it away to be sprayed or covered or whatever. Bring that cabinet back, that could be attached back on and you immediately have a fresh new look. If you go cheap with your cabinet and you don't go for wood or something that actually can be treated or sprayed or painted you're just gonna have to end up replacing them which unfortunately means more money and more cost so therefore invest first in good quality and high quality cabinetry and you won't have to spend later and top tip just because you want to change your cabinets doesn't mean you just have to go for painted you could change the hardware on the cabinets updating your hardware means that you get an instant fresh look without having to spend hardly any money if all of a sudden you've gone from silver to brass now you've got that expensive look without having to change your mind and if you change your mind you can always go back you can paint the hardware whatever changing the hardware means you get that instant fix or something new without having to break the bank the second item which I feel is the most important that you should always spend money on is your sofa. This doesn't necessarily mean that you have to break the bank, but it does mean that you have to take a considered amount of time to make that purchase. Don't just buy something online based on the measurements. Now, if you haven't measured it, that's another thing we're gonna get into. Don't just buy something online that you like and that is gonna come within a week. Make sure you take time. If you can go to a showroom so you can sit on the sofa, understand what the filling of the sofa is because the more time you're going to sit on it the more squash the filling is going to get and over time you will have to replace it make sure you understand what the depth of the arm is these things will determine the longevity of your sofa and will determine in the long term if you will actually have to replace it or not me personally something like a velvet sofa in terms of fabric sounds good in theory but in the long term pile on that velvet can start to wear away when you start to sit in the same place all the time so that beautiful velvet sofa will look good in places but where you always sit it's going to look tired and it's going to look worn out and we have got time for that i would always go for an upholstered sofa whether it be a linen fabric or a cotton fabric that is quite hard wearing so that over time it's not going to look like it looks tired also if you get covers for that sofa that you can actually take off and wash and actually have maybe two or three sets that you can change over time that where you're not constantly wearing out the same fabric all of the time and you also get a new look every time you wash your sofa covers it's a win-win for me it's the versatility for me i'll tell you that much the next item to spend a little bit of money on is of course the bed frame and the mattress now mattresses aren't cheap but if you shop around you might be able to find a good deal from some of these online sofa places like simba and eve mattresses when it comes to the actual bed frame make sure you measure the space i cannot i cannot confirm this enough you have to measure as much as you may want a king bed baby girl if the king don't fit in your room you're going to be scooting 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 around the edge to get into bed and ain't nobody got time for that take the time to measure your space to make sure you have space for two bedsides as well as the space to walk around your bed or however you position your bed ideally you want to be able to have enough space to comfortably walk around and if you're with your partner they have space to get out of the bed as well you don't want to be sacrificing comfortability just because you want a king or a queen size bed it's not practical at all dining chairs is also something that you should invest in constantly sitting on it the constant rocking on the legs you need to make sure you spend a little bit of cash once these legs start to go in these chairs it can actually become a safety hazard and one of your guests could end up falling on their ass at your dinner party are you not embarrassed are you not embarrassed this is really embarrassing you want to make sure that the legs are good quality and it is a wooden frame I would always recommend going to a showroom or at least buying one chair before you splurge and buy four because anything could go wrong in a batch of chairs. Buy one first, if you like it, go ahead and buy the other three or the other five if, that, if that's your bag. 
but always 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 spend a little bit more invest in the quality find out the base materials of that chair before you go ahead and just buy it online the next item is your rug make sure you pick the right pile rug and when i say pile you've got short pile rug which is quite thin or a deep pile rug which you can actually grip your toes into depending on the area of your space will determine what kind of rug you need if the area has high traffic it might be better to go with a low pile rug so you're not constantly constantly collecting dirt in this rug in your bedroom you might want to go for a deep pile because you want to get out of your bed you want to put your toes in it in the hallway or entryway low pile may be better and up the stairs you're going to need something that's thick that's quite coarse that's going to be able to handle that traffic going up and down the stairs identify your rug needs by the area that you need don't just buy it because it looks pretty because you're gonna end up spending money and you're gonna end up spending money to replace it okay now this is an area that i feel like people tend to forget you must invest in your bed sheets this is something that's rubbing on your skin it's something that's rubbing on your face you don't want to be rubbing cardboard on your face oh my god invest in some egyptian cotton i know it's expensive but baby you're going to be in bed you feel like you're going to be floating on a cloud you want to feel comfortable and also once you're constantly washing it you want to feel like you're getting the quality fair enough i know primark makes sheets and i know they they're cheap but if the quality is not good you're going to end up spending twice as much so invest now worry later and sleep well and last but not least is your artwork and your mirrors some glass in some mirrors can actually warp when you walk past it if you look like you're gaining weight and losing weight in the mirror that mirror is cheap baby girl you need to make sure that that mirror doesn't walk when you walk past it ikea and dunelm as well as made.com do fantastic quality mirrors that glass ain't warping and ain't going nowhere you want to make sure that the fittings on the back of that mirror are strong so when you hang it up it's not budging don't buy cheap when it comes to mirrors. These are a focal point and something you're gonna be looking at every day. And when you're gonna be cleaning that glass, you don't wanna feel like that glass is rocking. It should be solid, solid as a rock, okay? When it comes to your artwork, the frames, try and buy wooden frames and try and get frames that actually have glass, not perspex. Depending on the actual size of the frame, the bigger the frame you go, the more than likely that it's gonna have perspex, just as a safety hazard. If the frame does fall, then glass doesn't smash everywhere. So most retailers will supply your frame over I think it's over 50 by 50 it will be a perspex good quality perspex um, insert inside that frame if it's a smaller frame go for glass not only will it make your photos look more expensive and look better quality but it also make them really look professional and like you have got them hung and printed by a professional another recommendation if you're going to print your photos yourself don't just print them on inkjet paper girl use something like snapfish where you can actually get photos printed for free if you buy a certain size and you can get them delivered directly to your door and they're printed on photo paper. These little differences will make your home look so expensive and eventually you won't have to keep changing them. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. I hope you like these little tips and tricks. Any tips that you want me to share or any tips that I've missed out, please leave those in the comments box. And since you're here, why don't you watch another video? I just posted a video of did we like it or was it just popular? The interior design edition where I go through certain products that my followers on Instagram said they can't stand or that they love. For more videos, please like and subscribe and I look forward to seeing you next time. Mwah.